गुड इवनिंग मैडम आई थिंक मैडम ऑल्सो जॉइन मैडम वी आर वेटिंग फॉर फ्यू मोर पार्टिसिपेंट्स एक्चुअली वी मेंशन सिक्स थर्टी सो वी विल स्टार्ट मैम यू आर नॉट आर्डिबल मैम Ma'am, ma'am, you are not audible, ma'am. Please unmute yourself. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, we are waiting for uh, participants. Uh, we start at six uh, thirty-five, ma'am. Okay. Uh,
Good evening, everyone. I request uh, Sunila to start the meeting. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. And hello to one and all present over here. And thank you for coming out this evening. My name is Sunila. Before I begin the session, let me introduce myself to you all. So I'm pursuing my third year of LLP in the prestigious Sri Venkateshwara University. So let me give you a brief about my university before getting started with the session. So Sri Venkateshwara University was established in 1954 to cater the educational needs and aspirations of the people of Royal Sima region of Andhra Pradesh. And after successfully completing 66 years of excellence in teaching, research, extension, and outreach activities in the university is committed to cater to the needs of higher education, offering a full range of post-graduation programs in arts, science, law, management, education, physical education, and many more disciplines. So from a humble beginning of one college with six departments, the university has now grown into the second largest university in the Andhra Pradesh, having four constituent colleges, that is College of Arts, Science, Commerce Management, and Computer Science, and also the College of Engineering, accommodating 54 departments, offering 72 programs. The university has made rapid strides in the field of higher education and research, and is edged as one of the best universities in the country and got accredited A plus grade by NACTO 2017. Now, it's a great pleasure for me to introduce a speaker today who is going to talk about the litigation law. This is a subject which we should all deeply be interested in because it is by avoiding mistakes that we can, you know, best ensure our futures. So our speaker is a professional senior advocate, Bahalakshmi Pavani Mam. I would request Purnima Srinivas to address the welcome vote. Purnima, could you please unmute yourself? Purnima, yeah, thank you. Hello. Welcome to all. Thank you for taking the time to join us. I welcome the very eminent speaker from Supreme Court of India, designated senior advocate, Ms. Mahalakshmi Pavani, and also a president of Supreme Court, Women's Lawyers Association, and now as a chief guest to Sri Venkateshwara University, and Professor B.B. Murli, the principal of Sri Venkateshwara University College of Arts, and our faculty students, once again, a warm welcome to everyone. As we move to as we move to the topic, a talk on litigation. Many of you know already a talk on litigation. This presentation provides an introduction to litigation, describes the litigation process from the pre-trial to the post-trial. After guidance on criminal litigation process and civil litigation process. Hope everyone present here would learn something now, new today and inculcate few professional habits. I request Madam to talk on behalf. Thank you all. Thank you, Purnima. Thanks a lot. So I would now like to request Kusuma to give us a brief about our eminent speaker of the day. Kusuma, could you please unmute yourself? Kusuma. Kusuma. Kusuma, could you please unmute yourself?
Kusumal. Okay, so I just want uh, not to delay much of the time. So let me myself uh, give you the very brief introduction of ma'am as well. So Ms. Mahalakshmi Pavani ma'am is a designated senior advocate, senior executive member, Supreme Court Bar Association, who holds the distinction of being the first woman from Karnataka and the sixth woman to be designated as senior advocate by the Sup Supreme Court of India after a full court bestowed upon her the convenant of senior gown on 23rd April 2015. Hailing from Bengaluru, Karnataka, Ms. Pavani pursued her legal education from Bangalore University, from where she earned her BA LLB, and subsequently she acquired Tho correspondence her ME in Human Rights, Periyar University, and LLM in Labor and Administrative Laws from Anam Anamala University from Chennai. Ms. Pavani Ma'am enrolled with the Bar Council of Karnataka on 21st August 1992 and commenced practice under the aegis of the late Shri K.C. Shiva Subramanyam, advocate, Ms. King and Patrich, thereby gaining tremendous exposure in the fields of civil, criminal and also corporate lit litigations as well. See, she has conducted cases and appeared before the Karnataka High Court and also before the tribunals quasi-judicial bodies and other lower courts in the state of Karnataka. In 1993, she was appointed as the standing counsel in the criminal court, Mayo Hall. In 1998, Ms. Pavani Ma'am joined the chambers of late Shri P.P. Rao, senior advocate, her father-in-law, and commenced practice in the Supreme Court of India. Ms. Pavani Ma'am had the esteemed privilege of assisting Shri Rao a number of important matters before the Supreme Court, in January 2005, she enrolled as an advocate on record of the Supreme Court after having achieved the third rank in AOR examinations that were conducted in the previous year. Over the years, Ms. Pavani Ma'am has represented the Union of India, the State of Punjab, and represented political leaders like Sonia Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi, H.D. Devi Gauda, H.D. Kumaraswamy, late Dorji Kandil, late J. J. Lalita, minister of different states on number of matters argued before the Supreme Court and on a number of cases for the private litigants, her forte being service law and criminal law. She is also on the legal aid panel of the Supreme Court. In 2014, she was elected president, Supreme Court Women's Lawyers Association, a post she continues to hold on this day as well. On 27th March 2015, Ms. Pavani Ma'am was elected as the first representative of the Supreme Court Bar Association in the Gender Sensitization Committee, a post which she held for two years. In December 2015, she was elected as a senior executive member of the Supreme Court Bar Association and held the post for an year. In May 2018, she was appointed as the vice chairman of the legal cell Supreme Court of India of the National Indian Congress. And on 12th December 2019, Ms. Pavani Ma'am contested for the post of senior executive at the Supreme Court Bar Association and won with the highest number of votes in the 10 years. She was also the part of search committee instituted to identify deserving advocates and recommend them to the Honorable Chief Justice of India to be elevated to different high courts across the India. It is worthy to note that Ms. Pavani Ma'am is also a recipient of several awards in recognition of her ever efforts and contributions to the law in society. She has been confessed with the National Law Day Award 2016 by the International Council of Jurists and Diplomats. She has been awarded the Mahila Shakti Shiromani Award by the NGO in Nepal. In 2018, Ms. Pavani Ma'am also received the Sampark First Samarthan Awards from the Bhatia Janta Party and in 2019, the Empathy Empowering People Against Hepatitis Award, which was conferred upon her by Sri Om Birla, Honorable Speaker, Lok Sabha and Dr. Harshwardhan, Union Health Minister. On 27 September 2019, a book titled Parmeshwara to PP, which was edited by Ms. Pavani Ma'am and dedicated in the font in memory of her late father-in-law, Sri P.P. Rao, was released by Sri Venkaya Naidu, Honorable Vice President of India. Her articles have been published in various national libraries, lawyer magazines, and web portals. And she has also delivered lectures on different subjects in the webinar. And on 22nd July 2000, 
2021, she was the single woman advocate nominated to the advisory board of the Bar Council of India. It's a great privilege to have you today, ma'am. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mahalakshmi Pavani, ma'am would preside the meeting on the topic which we have been must awaited from the start. So I request Pavni Ma'am to take this meeting forward. Thank you, Ma'am. Thank you. Sorry, Ma'am. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah. A very good evening to all the students of Sri Venkateshwara University. Good evening to the principal. Thank you to the LLB department for having uh, asked me to come and speak about something which is very close to my heart, career in litigation. And uh, I know all of you students must be waiting for this. Uh, what exactly is litigation? Litigation is the act of practice, the process of solving a dispute inside the court. So that is litigation. Now you all are all students and you are on your first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year. So normally what entices you all to practice? No, it is mostly, you know, whether you like it or you don't like it, you all already decide whether you all want to go into litigation or you all want to go into firm practice or you all want to be appointed as legal advisors in banks or companies, big, big companies where the salaries are very lucrative. So ultimately it is what drives you to litigation is solely your passion. So when you want to litigate, when you want to fight, litigate, litigation is going to court representing a client, either he is the, uh, what do you say, the plaintiff or the defendant, and you fight for him, you show the court, the law, the, you know, the present, the facts, and then you ask for justice, you present the case to the court. So that is basically litigation. So now, and like if somebody asks you, why do you want to litigate? you all may not have definite answers probably or will say that oh we like litigating because we like to argue or we we feel that we can present our case very nicely or probably i have the gift of the gab or i don't have stage frights i like it is i feel nice so these are kinds of ways of expressing but what exactly is litigation practice what should you do to that so i would suggest as students you all go for you you all go for internships to those advocates who are regularly practicing in courts see courts in the sense i would say to start off with is the trial court is the must then the high court and then probably the supreme court because foundation of law is very very mm, required in this profession you need to know the basics of law law practice in procedure everything see when we started practice we didn't have moot court we didn't have internships in fact i studied at an evening law college i was doing my bsc in um, uh, chemistry botany zoology in mount carmel college but because i had to attend to my mother's litigation and uh, i was about 18 years old so i had to go there and I started going to court. That's how I enrolled in this evening college. And then I started liking because when you enter litigation, you must first remember there is no money in the initial years. It is going to be a tough, tough fight. It's a long, long road. But the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step, the first step. That is the Chinese proverb which says, Lao Tse says that, that a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So you have to take that one step. So to take that one step, you must be prepared to work because there is a saying which says, you work like a horse and you live like a hermit. So there is unending, you you know you have to burn the midnight oil for this it is not an easy procedure it is not an easy process especially those who are looking at money well please stay out of litigation because initially you have to work very hard you have to give it all your time and apart from being a very good advocate see it's not only about advocacy it is about knowledge you have to have knowledge of various laws not only of laws you should have a good knowledge of literature history economics because ultimately you will be representing your client you will be representing him before the bank or in a money dispute or in uh, trade matters or anything like that even in 
matrimonial even if you want to uh, what do you say represent your client in some temple suits and things like that you will have to have the basic if you have see knowledge as part so the more you study the more you get and so, let me tell you honestly the more i study i feel i know less i feel i, I feel i know nothing so you know that's how it is so here is a, a, a litigation it's a perseverance you know and you must not look at money in the initial years you have to be dedicated you have to be focused you have to have command over the language you should work on command over the language you should learn to be very very polite and very pleasant in court you should not lose sight of the fact you should not lose your temper you should uh, look uh, you know uh, look at uh, when you go to court you should not simply i i be, be idle you should not waste your time but you must go and learn you must see go to from court to court see how people are arguing how advocates it's, that's the art of advocacy that is an art that is a skill and that skill comes to you only over a period of time it just doesn't come like that you know like rome was not built in a day your careers are not going to be built in a day like when we see all these big advocates around us fali nariman mr harish salve sir mukul rodhki sir we all feel oh my god they are overnight successes they are you know the, the what celebrity uh, stars of supreme court they are the celebrity but does anyone ever realize that they have also put in so much of hard work efforts they have also have had sleepless nights worked hard you know it is not an oh, it is not an easy journey but let me tell you if you have the fire in your belly you have the passion to pursue it you have people supporting you in your house monetarily and things like that i'm sure you will be very very successful but everything has to be patient there is no overnight stardom in every profession there is a struggle so there is a struggle out here also so when we say and then it's not only about your presentation in court you also have to have a good knowledge of the law you have to have very good communication skills you have to be honest and it's not as if you go and lose your temper there or you uh, kind of you know misbehave and uh, see and another thing is sometimes we also feel that we have to give back something to society so we all, we we know this law so even you can also do social matters you know with pertaining to social issues environmental matters or some kind of matters where you even do it pro bono but i ultimately ensure that you are doing your best see even see losing winning a case that depends on the court it depends on the a judge it depends on a various factors winning is not in our hands losing is not in our hands the efforts we put in and then do it without any expectation just like arjuna krishna tells arjuna do your duty do your best leave the rest to god that's it so that is what your focus should be you know so when and see it's litigation is again a struggle you said so you must have you must work under somebody who is really good who encourages you and uh, you must uh, hone up your skills in drafting so you have to have a lot of reading sessions then apart from reading sessions you also have to have the uh, you know uh, the speeding up your your reading speed your skill should increase you can't read one page for one hour like that so you should have to increase your skill in reading also so these are various factors um, in uh, a law as such see yesterday i was talking to pavan kalyan and then he put me in touch with when giriraj so he so he said he's a student and then i said what do you expect me from, expect from me giriraj what do you want me to speak on he said ma'am we want some nice case laws you know landmark judgments about career in litigation or how what is the role of an advocate and all that so you know i thought okay fine let let me tell uh, let me find some case laws so i have found some case laws as to what how the supreme court how the judgments of these courts have defined an advocate so i would want you all to you know i will cite the thing and i will read from the relevant pages so the first matter is uh, 2001 2 scc versus t n mishra so that is reported in 2001 to scc uh, 221 so you know this is a three judge bench decision and um, i refer to paragraph 24 to 27 
but I will read paragraph 27. Here, Mr. Justice Crompton, an Irish judge, he describes an, a lawyer. He says, the advocate is a representative, but not a delegate. He gives to his client the benefit of his learning, his talents, and his judgments. But all through, he never forgets what he owes to himself and to others. He will not knowingly misstate the law. He will not willfully misstate the facts, though it, to be, it be to gain the case for his client. He will ever bear in mind that if he be an advocate of an individual and retained and remunerated, often inadequately for valuable services, yet he has a prior and perpetual retainer on behalf of truth and justice, and there is no crown or other license which in any case or any party or purpose can discharge him from that primary and paramount retainer. So this is how just the Justice Crampton, an Irish judge, describes the who are advocates. In fact, at para 24, the, the court comes down and the court goes on to say, it has been a saying as old as the profession itself that the court and the council are two wheels of the chariot of justice. In the adversarial system, it will be more appropriate to say that while the judge holds the reins, the two opponent counsel are the wheels of the chariot. So while the direction of the movement is controlled by the judge holding the reins, the movement itself is facilitated by the wheels without which the chariot of justice may not move and may even collapse. Mutual confidence in the discharge of duties and cordial relations between the bench and bar smoothen the movement of the chariot. As responsible officers of the court, as they are called, and rightly so, the council have an overall obligation of assisting the courts in a just and proper manner in the trial in the ju of justice, zeal, and enthusiasm uh, of and are the traits of success in the profession, but overzealousness and misguided enthusiasm have no place in the personality of a professional. An advocate, while discharging duty to his client, has the right to do everything fearlessly and boldly that would advance the cause of his client. After all, he has been engaged by his client to secure justice for him. A counsel need not make a concession merely because it would please the judge. Yet a counsel, in his zeal to earn success for a client, need not step over the well-defined limits of propriety, repute, and justness. Independence and fearlessness are not licenses of liberty to do anything in the court and to earn success to a client, whatever be the cost and whatever be the sacrifice of professional norms. See, this is this is one. This is the only place where Article Fourteen is, uh, what do you say, uh, observed? Why? Because there is an equality of opportunity. This is one place where you and the opposite counsel both have the same pleadings. Both are at par, and the judge has the pleadings in his hands. So here, it is not who is senior or who is junior. Here, both of you have an equal opportunity to represent the facts, to state your case and to be heard. So when you are doing it, you must you must also remember there is a conduct of the person. The, the advocate has a personality to maintain. He should be very polite and but firm. He should not get very uh, acrimonious or very volatile because sometimes here, Nowadays, I see that people lose their temper, they lose their, they start shouting, they start fighting, they throw frustrations. That is not good advocacy. So here you have to maintain your calm. And another thing about being an advocate is you have to have this power of persuasion. And then you also have to have a very good PR skill, public relations skill, because you're not only dealing with the court or the judge, you're also dealing with the clients. You have to represent them before various tribunals, courts, and other places, uh, NGTs and things like that. And you also have to have a nice rapport with uh, the court officials. You have to be polite. So you give respect and take respect. Nowadays, if I go to court, I see that you all will study professional ethics and come, but there, uh, they even a, a senior see, uh, advocate who is senior in age or a senior citizen is standing 
people even don't even offer their chair so you know basic manners basic courtesy basic ethics are eroding that is my personal observation i have seen that oh they come there and every every student wants to become an overnight you know mr salve or mr singhvi you know they think that if they know the law or if they are very good let me tell you one thing good marks don't assure or ensure that you are going to be a great advocate Sure, marks don't define your success as an advocate. Sure, what defines your success is your perseverance, your dedication, your sincerity to the brief. You must read the matter in and out. You must know your brief so well. You must know the law so well. You must be, you know, uh, empowered. You must go with uh, case laws. You must. help the court to arrive at a conclusion at a correct decision and if you know that something is going wrong you should have the conviction you should have the courage to tell no this is wrong and this is right so whatever you speak you should speak from your heart and you should speak it with conviction it and must be very polite it is no use losing your temper and things like that so there are other decisions also which i would want to rely on you know here in harish shuppal's case i wanted to see uh, say what hm sirwai had said so he so he was a distinguished jurist a jurist and you all know hm sirwai's constitution and things like that so this i would be referring it to is 2003 to scc page number 45 harish ex captain harish shuppal versus union of india so at para 21 it is said it must be remembered that an advocate is an officer of the court and enjoys special status to society advocates have obligations and duties to ensure smooth functioning of the court they owe a duty to their clients strikes interference with the administration of justice they cannot just disrupt court proceedings and put interests of their clients in jeopardy in the words of hm sirwai a distinguished jurist Lawyers ought to know that as long as lawful redress is available to aggrieved lawyers, there is no justification for lawyers to join in an illegal conspiracy to commit a gross criminal contempt of court, thereby striking at the heart of liberty conferred on every person by our constitution. This I am reading with reference to strikes. You know, sometimes you know in your local bar associations, like if the judge says something, your your association comes up and says, "Let us strike. Let us have a candle march." Because I was very very. Um, it was very very common to me when I was member of the executive last year. uh mr vikas singh my president would always say let's hold a candle march you know let us protest and i would say no protest is not the correct thing because we are the apex bar we are being looked upon by various associations associations of the country so you know we should lead by example so this i am saying that no bar in this country should go on a strike or an illegal protest because it relates it results in an interference with the administration so the principle is that those who have duties to discharge in a court of justice are protected by the law and are shielded by the law to discharge those duties the advocates in return have a duty to protect the courts for once consider that lawyers are about the law and the law courts there can be no limit to lawyers taking the law into their own hands to paralyze the working of the courts in my submission he said that it is high time that the supreme court and the high courts make it clear beyond doubt that they will not tolerate any interference from anybody or authority in the daily administration of justice for in no other way can the supreme court and the high court maintain the high position and exercise the great powers conferred by the Constitution Constitution and the law to do justice without fear or favor, affection or ill will. So this is what I'm trying to say: is that we, as officers of the court, should ensure that the decorum of the court is maintained. We do not go on strikes. We do not hold the court to ransom. And these are ethics. These are you know a, a person's character is revealed. So by the by your conduct, your client. And see another thing about this profession is. it is the most noble profession so we cannot advertise because advertising means it amounts to commercializing so and commercializing can you advertise and say i am going to get you a judgment no you can't do it here you are doing your duty bound to represent your client the result is not in your hand so therefore the bar council of india clearly prohibits this kind of an advertisement 
yes to a certain extent now they are coming up with websites and all that but that's okay but here can see here this is one profession where there is no parity we are senior advocates even in senior advocates the, the uh, fees varies the fees varies from thousands to lakhs per appearance so there is no kind of parity and here we are working towards justice so what and what gives me a high well i do pro bono i'm on the legal aid also so for me getting justice for a litigant whom i have not seen because in supreme court we never get to meet the litigants and as a senior advocate we don't interact with litigants as such but uh, but when i see them in court or when i see when they come the 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 happiness in their eyes the glow on their face whether i've lost a case or won a case it's a material because they know at the end of the day i have fought hard so at the end of the day what matters it is your pursuance your perseverance the passion in which you argue everything is not it's all preordained you may say but giving it your best shot that is what matters it is soul satisfying it is gratifying you feel simply emotionally and you know mentally so happy that yes if you win the case well and good you feel so satisfied gratified and say yes we got justice we were able to do this see and this whatever this feeling which you get i mean i can't tell you how beautiful that feeling is it's more than money see money is required i'm not saying it's not required money is not everything it is something to lead a very dignified life a very satisfied life so satisfaction also depends on what a what what is the definition of satisfaction in your life i believe that there must be contentment there is must not be comparison with anyone in the profession you don't compare see because all of us come with from different backgrounds we all have our own destiny we all have our own journey in life so the best thing is you do your work you study you read you prepare the brief you prepare the arguments you also have to do out of box thinking you when you stand on your feet there you not only when you do the brief you also think what would the opponent advocate ask what will the judge ask what are the questions you can you know it's all intuitive also see at the end of the day you will Uh, try to find out see put yourself in the place of a litigant so when you want to put yourself in the place of a litigant you have to be very sensitive you have to be very emotional you know you should not uh, be rude or harsh you put yourself in the place of a litigant and then see how would you feel if you were in his shoes so can you get justice will you be able to persuade the court to give an order so that is how it is you must be very very uh, what do you say a very sensitive your the sensibilities you know should be very strong you must have a bonding you must have a, a human emotion attached to whatever you do i tell my clients you know it's not only my hard work which goes into your brief my prayers also go my soul my prayers from my heart goes into a brief and for me every brief is a baby i love every brief i don't distinguish whether it's a pro bono brief or a paid brief every every brief goes in the same hours of work hard work goes in because when we put our hard work you know results are there and let me tell you our clients are our best advertisers we don't need any advertisement at all by word of mouth it spreads it just spreads she is very good you know he is very good you just go to him you know he will do a very good case he will argue your case you will you will feel satisfied so that satisfaction is something you know which which gives us happiness see i cannot co comment about firm practice or anything because i don't know what mergers or acquisitions or what is the high they get see they may they are paid all very well but that is a different ball game altogether for me here going to court stepping there on the soil it gives me a great high i really feel so nice i feel so blessed to be representing somebody and getting justice for them so that is how i look at i've been there in this career 30 years i complete so maa lakshmi pavni is known now but has anyone seen that 30 years behind me how much of efforts have gone in there how much of studies how much of restless sleepless nights how much of hard money even today if i lose a case see, we all don't win all cases we don't lose all cases we lose some we win some so but at the end of the day 
you are so attached to the brief that you ultimately end up spending some sleepless night or whatever and then if you can't do something if you cannot represent somebody or you you can also you know in during litigation itself you can also uh, uh what do you say write articles educate people write uh, you know book reviews or something like that to uh, to educate those masses who are you know not aware of their rights so and this is a there is another judgment would i which i would like to say this is 2019 16 scc 407 r muttu krishnan versus the high court of madras so there are paras 16 to 20 and paras 25 to 27 so i would just read paras 25 to 27 the rule of a lawyer is indispensable in the system of delivery of justice he is bound by the professional ethics and to maintain the high standard his duty is to the court to his own client to the opposite side and to maintain the respect of the opposite party counsel also what may be proper to others in society may be improper for him to do as he belongs to a respected intellectual class of the society and a member of the noble profession. The expectation from his, him is higher. Advocates are treated with respect in society. People repose immense faith in the judiciary and the judicial system and the first person who deals with them is a lawyer. Litigants repose faith in a lawyer and share with them privileged information. They put their signatures wherever asked by a lawyer. An advocate is supposed to protect their rights and to ensure that untainted justice is delivered to his cause. The high values of the noble profession have to be protected by all concerned at all costs and in all circumstances cannot be forget forgotten even by the youngsters in the fight of survival in the formative years. The nobility of the legal profession requires an advocate to remember that he is not over attached to any case as advocates does not win or lose a case. Real recipient of justice is behind the curtain who is at the receiving end. As, as the matter of fact, we do not give a litigant anything except recognizing his rights. A litigant has a right to be impartially advised by a lawyer. Advocates are not supposed to be money guzzlers or ambulance chasers. A lawyer should not expect any favor from the judge and should not involve by any means in influencing the fair decision making process. It is his duty to master the facts and the law and submit the same precisely in the court. His duty is not to waste the court's time. It is said by Alexander Cockburn that the weapon of the advocate is the sword of a soldier, not the dagger of the assassin. It is the ethical duty of lawyers not to expect any favor from a judge. He must rely on precedents. Read them carefully and avoid corruption and collusion of any kind. Not to make false pleadings and avoid twisting of facts. In a profession, everything cannot be said to be fair, even in the struggle for survival. The ethical standard is uncompromisable. Honesty, dedication, and hard work is the only source towards perfection. An advocate's conduct is supposed to be exemplary. In case an advocate causes disrepute of the judges or his colleagues or involved involves himself in misconduct that is the most sinister and damaging act which can be done to the entire legal system such a person is definitely dead wood and deserves to be chopped francis bacon has said about judges that judges ought to be more learned than witty more reverent than plausible more advice than confident above all integrity is their portion and proper virtue patience and gravity of learning is an essential part of justice and an overspeaking judge is no well-tuned symbol so these are the things even the courts have laid down now when you say when you when you start litigating when you become an advocate when people look at you and you say you've just passed out from college you know what happens when you say you're an advocate your status in society goes up your social status is uh people look at up look up to you and they say oh my god they are young advocates so we should take them seriously nobody messes around with you immediately the respect you get even when you go back to your college after you become an advocate let me tell you your teachers will look at you from another angle altogether they will speak to you with more respect and they will speak to you uh, in a very reserved way. I mean, you know, they, their mindsets completely change. Why? Because y'all are known as the intellectual lawyers. Y'all, y'all represent the intelligentsia of people. Y'all represent their cases. So, 
so that it gives a total different uh, outlook you know to uh, the, the in your social response in your uh, social status in, is enhanced so these are the ways uh, uh, how you are going to be benefited by this profession but only thing is one should have a lot of patience because as you, a seed when planted today is not going to give fruit tomorrow it has to grow into a tree and then the fruits can be expected but at the end of the day we should have a good supporting family or a spouse or good staff to help you promote you and uh, um, uh, and ensure that you are, there are no hurdles because as a woman advocate i do a lot of multitasking and initial years of my uh, uh, career i had a, my my mother in law used to be a very good uh, mother to my kids so that is how i was able to concentrate right now my kids are grown up but i have very good staff my house staff look after my work so that's how i'm able to concentrate on all my work and my father in law would always tell me alakshmi your work should speak so how does the work speak when you put in your heart and soul into it you read the papers from front to back and back to front you know the law you present your case with utmost decorum and 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 give it your best shot because when you are arguing in court see i don't believe in this virtual thing i believe in an eye contact i believe in being present before the court because there you are watched by a lot of people there hundreds of people look at you and they will Rep, they will appreciate you they will appreciate the way you have presented your case your calmness the way you have taken the judge lordships through the entire file and it speaks volumes it speaks because one one client will tell the other or another junior advocate watching you will say oh she, he argued well she argued well why don't you engage her so that is how practice grows and and we should also have a good library if we don't have a good library go to the library in the court spend some good time and now everything is online so scc or uh, manupatra you uh, indiancanon.com everything is available so i would always suggest that you all develop a cult you will cultivate a habit for reading reading not only law books on literature history economics these make a lot of a difference to your career any questions kalyan uh, i would now request all the participants if you are having any questions to ma'am you can just raise your hands and start asking your questions i don't know before you ask questions where was i clear about your career in litigation does anybody yeah, want... ma'am definitely you were uh and uh i personally had one of the question yeah, so yes. even in the bio and as you mentioned ma'am you just said that uh, you started your practice uh, with your father in law but uh, when coming to me i am like the first generation lawyer so i don't have anyone backed up yeah. i'll tell you something this is a little personal to me but it's uh, anyway it's uh, nothing is personal when you come on a public platform you see my husband and i are divorced so it was although we were divorced i stayed in the same house so my father in law coming from a very conservative background orthodox background never promoted me because he could not promote me you know turning a blind eye to his son so he told me he said ma lakshmi my grandfather was not sitting here to promote me i have come up the hard way you know he came from a remote village from mogala cherla in andhra pradesh nellore district so he said if you want to practice come up your way come up the hard way i am not here to promote you and believe me till today he never told anyone that i am his daughter in law i have started from scratch but people always say that yeah she is rao's daughter in law she got it easy but let me tell you mr udaya holla the former advocate general of state of karnataka i admired him when i was practicing when i started i started my career because i was going to court to defend my mother's case and he was the opposite lawyer i used to see him and when i saw him i that it was it struck to me some day i have to defeat this man i have to and that is how you know that fire grew in my stomach and believe me i grew up admiring him i wanted to defeat him all right but he told me one thing he said madam what comes easy goes easy so i even today as a woman lawyer competing in a man's world at the supreme court i have to do my case every day i have to prove myself because here also there's disparity amongst women and men we are not paid at par 
and not all the high five cases come to all the women advocates in supreme court it's only the men who rule there there also they'll say madam you are a woman why do you want money but the, can they go and ask a male advocate that why do you want money so you see there are challenges everywhere sunila it is not an easy job it is a full time job filled with sacrifices you don't have a social life let me tell you sometimes i i i hardly go out anywhere even if i go i because i'm a religious person i love visiting temples because that's where i get my strength from so it was please let me tell you having a father in law i wish you had bought my book parmeshwara to pp where i have written i have categorically stated that mr rao was there my father in law was there but he never promoted me yes i must in all honesty say there was one mr rao who really helped me that was justice l nageshwar rao when he was additional solicitor general he would give me cases i was on the union panel a panel so he would say mahalakshmi go and argue so and he used to argue my briefs because as an advocate on record i used to engage him so he is perhaps the only mr rao who has helped me literally by standing up for me and and giving me briefs and saying go and argue i know he had faith in me but mr rao i have never been state counsel for state of andhra or any and i have not been anywhere whatever i have earned is through my hard earned work it's based on merit pure merit yeah. thank you ma'am and uh, ma'am i just just want to like to brief these are some of the questions that we received yeah. so um the very first question was why does litigation cost so much to us these days see why is litigation cost is because i tell you parity of fees people all want to charge very high fees and then the time the time limit the duration we don't know when the case litigation is going to start when it's going to end how many years are going to be spent at the trial court how many years are going to be spent at the high court and how many years going to be spent at the supreme court see because at the end of the day you cannot assure the client anything but at the end of the day even i think socially i think greed also is one of the things so people are not satisfied you know they want to extract the client see that is why there is mediation there is arbitration and sometimes i tell the clients in all honesty i'll say see this is it if you want to you know you are uh, giving money or betting money on a losing horse so are you ready to take the risk they say yes we want to take the risk and believe me i lose cases also and they are very happy they are very happy you know why because they know that i fought for justice i have shown every page i have shown the law i have shown precedents i have done this so that's how it is so it's a gamble okay ma'am and uh, one more question that uh, we received was can litigation cases be only argued by the advocate who is specialized in that specific field see no no there are petitioners in person also there are at the persons who without any legal background who come and argue their cases because they feel that they can best put their court see that is why i said a uh, advocate should be a very sensitive you know very sensitive emotionally also he must be involved because until and unless he places himself in the litigant's shoes he will not be able to deliver you have to feel it from your heart and you must feel the pain it is only then because i do a lot of this criminal cases where i represent all the accused in 302 306 307 all these kind of you know cases 376 and also and see i was also i also represented um uh, uh, my or my scwla wherein we had asked for chemical castration and death penalty for child rapists so until and unless you are convinced your conviction has to be there and it is how you put your case across to the thing and uh, sunila let me tell you whatever i'm saying is i'm speaking just for myself my personal yeah yes ma'am and uh, one more take uh, that i just observed uh, was the recent judgment on uh, the jagannath temple of bhuvaneshwar so in that uh, you did uh, mention that uh, the court did not consider the evidence that was submitted by the archaeological department as well so uh, how do you think ma'am like can the court consider that all the litigation are like public interest seeking because see honestly speaking i don't want to pass any comments but this was not a public interest litigation let me tell you i did not move the high court at all my client so when i say i i'm representing i'm i speak for my client okay 
so i i did not move the high court it was moved by some dilip kumar baran but he did not have enough uh, what do you say funds to move the supreme court because supreme court litigation is expensive you have to pay court fee you have to pay typing you have to get an advocate on record all that so that is it so the court said uh, that we allow you to challenge an entry order we grant you special leave to petition they say that we raised substantial questions of law which deserves to be gone in but they say that we i wasted the time of the court it was not at all my intention to waste the court's time because ultimately it is only because of dilip kumar baral's case the reception center the the tourist kiosk which was going above the jagannath temple you understand that was relocated and the trenches the excavations which have been done you know the damage is irreparable nobody can say anything now we can't look into a judgment see our duty is to do our best now like i will give you another example we have the supreme court of india we are all advocates advocates and litigants are also stakeholders in the supreme court right but under the garb of uh, what do you say administration or welfare for the lawyers can the government come and put up a construction in the lawns of the supreme court where the uh, the chambers superimpose the structure the doom of the supreme court please tell me because jagannath temple is a worldwide heritage it does not belong to any state or to me or anyone it is a ma- monument of national importance right definitely yes so you know it is it is our faith you know the faith we have for the lord you know it is our duty to protect what was very uncharitable was after saying that we have raised substantial questions of law everything the judge i mean the they came out with a 40 page judgment so it was not actually time based but they have put a closure to it but the positive thing is that uh, there will be no further excavations hopefully they and what my only concern was i was not concerned with the development as such my concern was why develop within the prohibited area when there is an art ancient monument archaeological site remains act of 1958 you which categorically prohibits any construction within 100 meters why do it within that you do it after 120 or 200 meters no see the jagannath temple has been there for more than 1000 years pilgrims have been worshiping there were no toilets then now what is this uh, sudden urgency of the uh, temple or the state to come up with toilets near the temple please tell me so it is that and uh, we have accepted the verdict see it is ultimately it's the order uh, it's the law of the land declared under 144 we have to respectfully accept it that's all and then jagannath knows everything i can yes. only do my best yes ma'am yeah pavan kalyan you can go ahead with your question ma'am um, i have one doubt ma'am yeah uh, can you please uh, suggest to the lady advocates uh, what are the cautions to take and while starting career as advocate there is nothing called caution because see it's a fraternity all our brothers and sisters there so uh, there is nothing like uh, see it's a family but only thing is don't expect your client to pay you as the same as as sunila cannot expect the same fees what pavan is charging so there will be disparity there and other than that there are lady bar bar rooms are there associations are there and let me tell you every advocate today lady advocates are all fearless girls they are very smart they are more well versed they know how to defend their client and they know how to take care of themselves so there is nothing as such nothing called fear that's what i feel all of you all are very bold just imagine when i started practice there were hardly any lady advocates no no male office was ready to take me that is not the case now okay. thank you ma'am ma'am and one more thing uh, how is a litigation uh, different from arbitration uh, 
See, arbitration, it is only before a learned arbitrator. But court is totally different, you know. Your litigation is totally different. Why? Because you represent so many clients. You represent different cases. You do service law. You do matrimonial law. You do this kind of criminal law and all that. But in arbitration, it is mostly the company kind of an arbitration or maybe matrimonial, matrimonial mediation takes place. Arbitration takes place only in company matters. So... I told you I'm not very well versed with firm type of litigations, right? Yeah, if anyone is having any such questions, you can please raise your hands. No any... questions? I guess they're all clear with the concepts, ma'am. <laughs> I'm glad you elaborated it very well, to be honest. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So and now I would like to request our principal sir to address today's meeting. Are you able to hear? Yeah. Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah. Nila, are you able to Kalyan? Yes, yes, sir. We are able to hear you. I'm audible, Mr. Principal, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So, pleasant evening to all my student friends from the Department of LLB, five years program, and the main speaker, Srimati Mahalakshmi Pawani Garu. Friends, ladies and gentlemen. So to be honest with you, I'm an odd man out here because I'm from the Department of Political Science and Public Administration. And fortunately or unfortunately, I became the HOD in charge for this five years LLB program and ML also. Madam, to be very honest with you, the reason why it's happening is that for the last 2017, 15 years, there is no recruitment okay. in almost all the state universities. And you'll be very much surprised if I say, because these are all the things which I want to tell you for the non LLB students, because the LLB students of my campus, they know about me, the others. I am holding 17 posts as of now, 17. Oh my God. Apart, my, apart from my 10 hours of class work per week. And the meetings, et cetera, et cetera, all extra. Today morning, we had this World Environment Day. We went, I went around 8.30, came back around 11 o'clock. UPSA exam was going on. I was there in my chamber till 12.30 when the deputy collector came. And of course, I came home. So I was where I had a class now, online class for my regular students. And then I was remembering Kalyan uh, <laughs> will uh, never accept if I escape. So, Seeing the enthusiasm of Kalyan and his team, even though they are very, very young, madam, I am telling you very openly because it's not present because I am just their in charge HOD. I am not the regular HOD at all, but the kind of affection, respect, and love they have towards me is immense, and more so especially from Kalyan. So looking at uh, my energy levels and my work, now and then he used to say, sir. Can we have this kind of webinars where you can help us? I said, no problem at all. You can go ahead. I'll be one, a part of your program, not the, because I don't belong to the Department of Law. And whatever topics you choose, it should be useful for you and for your friends, not for me. As a layman or as a non-law faculty or student, I can listen. So that's how this is the second program which they have organized. And once the program is over, when I put the some of the pics in the status, my friends were asking in Telugu, if uh, because I don't may, may not be knowing Telugu, in Telugu they'll be asking, hey, how come your students can catch that Pradeep Rai, who is a senior advocate from Supreme Court? I said, I too was surprised. For that age, I don't know how Kalyan and his team. Could I can say Team Kalyan, like Team India, 
sir i must tell you one thing pawan yeah. will do a very be a very good advocate because he has great persuasive skills okay, he that's, me, yeah yeah man that's what that's what yeah, he chased right. me for one week and uh, i was not in a mood to do yeah, this yeah, webinar sure. because i was Definitely because i can understand uh, verdict you okay. being there Yes. You being in the Supreme with the highest judicial body, you'll be having a lot of work, and that too by having sun, today is Sunday, maybe some personal things to attend and all those things. But still, he could make Pradeep Rai and you to come. That shows you were concerned, and you were, I can say, the responsibility. Whatever I want to towards the students community, you want to help them. That's what I have learned from you and from Pradeep Rai also after listening to both of you, man. It's very honest. So I have put in nearly 32 years of uh, service as a faculty. I joined in 1989, and law is a part of political science. Law and politics, law and sociology, law and economics, law and history, law and administration go together. So we cannot differentiate. Sir, in fact, law is a very jealous mistress. That is why I say <laughs> that she takes away all the time. There is no time yeah, to yeah, yeah. or anything. Yeah. So the more you. Yeah, put sure. it, you will have to keep you know making her happy so she is a very demanding mistress so yes. a lot of hard work so, and when, study goes into it yeah when we say litigation i just remember i, I just anjan singh just one minute when i say litigation in inter because my specialization is international relations and foreign policy we study about the litigation at the international level as a layman and as a student of political science it's not the questioning but it's uh, my observation which i want to tell each and every one of your friends why we are like this always fighting why going to the courts courts have their own headache to take care of for small small things the executive and the leg uh, legislature in our country are taking the simple issues and throwing in front of the judges who are already overburdened, overworked, without taking even summer holidays. Because I follow the law very much. Without the summer holidays also, they are working. Is that much necessary for the legislature, the lawmakers, the law implementers, to put everything before the judiciary and say that you solve even their own problems, which are very, very simple. Sir, in fact, yeah, we can have a discussion. Tell madam, no in problem. In fact, the judge's life is a very, very sad life, sir. Yeah, sir, I know, madam. I know. Sacrifice yes. to do, so much of reading to do. Yes. It is, you know, coupled with so much of, and after the giving the judgment, sometimes people <laughs> like us mm -hmm. are, really, you know, uh, are very unhappy. See, a yes, judge very unhappy. Is to give justice. And you to you get the judgment. you get the bookcase and you get the brick bats also yes, because. Yes. You the cannot will be, two people be given happy. by the people who win the case, the brickbats by the people who think that you have done some. Yeah, uh, the scales of justice yeah. cannot weigh equally. Yeah, yeah that's not true. happy, sir. So ultimately, we also have to realize there's only one person who will win and one who will. Yeah, win. that's correct. So, like, yeah. like in a game, in a game, only one will win, one will lose definitely most of the drive will take place very rarely yes i'm and reminded yes. of justice jr mitta who recently retired from the delhi high court and he said the plaintiff and the defendants the parties know what is the truth it is the judge yes, who yes madam that's correct that's because I, I, last time when pradeep professor i was following this uh, sanjay that case and the sheena bora murder case and all those things i've been following sometimes after five years or seven years the accused is being let off. So like this. So at the inter let me talk about forum for a few minutes. Then we can have a discussion. If someone wants, as Gupta Sab is uh, raising his work. And why we want to take the issues which can be solved between two countries? Very simple. If India and Pakistan have a problem, let them solve it. Why you want to take it to the International Court of Justice? And suppose if the International Court of Justice gives a judgment either in favor of India or Pakistan, all hell will break loose. I am telling you because the people in these two countries, the political parties in these two countries will attribute so many things to the judges and those who got an unfavorable judgment, definitely they will not be happy at all. So if you don't have trust on the judges, why you want to take up that issue to the judiciary, which you can solve yourselves. 
This is the one question which is always there in my mind after looking at the World War One and World War Two. Even in the International Court of Justice said that these countries have done something wrong. They never listen. They said, OK, what can you do? I will do as I want to. North Korea has been the accused. But still, it says international law will not be applicable to them. So these kind of things will definitely make only one that change must come from us, not from the judges need not tell us or someone, the police should not come and tell us that you are doing something wrong. Why you give a chance to those agencies to pass some kind of judgment or this? So when Madam was telling all this, this I was just there. Why this should be like, this is where everyone has to judge for ourselves. So small, small things. And uh, recently there was uh, some marital rape on uh, the husband raped the wife and it went to the court. Is that much necessary? I, how the court doesn't have any work except to solve the problem. Whether wife is correct or husband is correct, whether you should do this or you should not do that. Some 10, 15 years back, I've said there are more than 1 lakh cases pending in the Supreme Court. Why you people want to take every case to the High Court or the Supreme Court? And get it solved. And then unnecessarily blame them also. So, this is a good topic which uh, Kalyan and his team has uh, taken up. So, let us try to solve the problems as much as possible within ourselves through arbitration, negotiations, discussions Mediations. like that and see that the highest body wherever they, at the state level or sorry district level, state level, national level at the international level take up the most important pressing problems so that the society in general, the world in general will be a safe place for everyone of us. When the courts are saying that you are polluting, nobody is listening. Because we can go and get the judgment in favor of us and see that our factory or the industries are not closed. And again, the litigation goes to the highest court. So friends, after listening to the main speaker, my appeal to every one of us is that try to solve the problems as much as possible for ourselves and see that the litigation doesn't go to the concerned authorities. So with this, I once again thank the students of uh, the 5S LLB program and especially Mahalakshmi Madam for sparing her time to be with all of us and enlightening us and especially the non-law student about litigation, how to be solved. And uh, I can say because she was very open about her personal uh, issues also, which normally people at the highest level doesn't come out. Because the reason why is she wants the young girls who are here, as she said, even though I am a man, I can say that this is a male dominated society. Very sorry to say that. Very, very sorry to say that. We are more egoistic than the women. And that's the problem with us. And thereby small, small things are going to the legal opinions, which is not correct. Let us treat everyone equally. There's nothing wrong. They are human. We are also human beings. It's not who should dominate, who should not dominate. So this kind of domestic litigations or other things, better we solve it at the family level. So thank you, Madam, once again, on behalf of uh, you, the College of Arts of our my university and my students and all those who are present here. Hope we will serve the community and especially the women community. Let me know because they are the one who are at the receiving end always in most of the cases. Most of the cases because what we see nowadays, it's uh, very disturbing.
at least people like you can help them as much as possible within your limitations thank yes. you very much I'm now deep it's and uh, yes. nice sir for your uh, for the opportunity given to me by team kalyan and others and i hope i have made myself clear i hope people know whether to choose career uh, litigation as a career or to go for firm practice so i hope uh, we get good advocates in the litigating side and who will not encourage litigation yes ma'am yes any any questions please for 5 10 minutes now it's uh, 742 we are going to wind up by 8 uh, so all the my favorite students uh, like... has come so there are three uh, bright students of this llb so one is shrestha the other one uh, <laughs> sunila and uh, kalyan and others but these three are very active they take up any kind of activity especially academic activity which is interested to them very perfectly that's what i like in a student okay now it's thrown open for discussion madam can answer some questions for uh, another 15 minutes we can have a formal vote of thanks at uh, 755 like that okay now it's open for discussion anyone anyone can unmute and uh, then suits uh, yes i would uh, personally like to request our faculty members anjan sir and bhavya ma'am yes. please anjan sir and some someone by name he was raising his hand ganesh ganesh or uh, uh, some gupta sir i guess gupta uh, yeah gupta yeah gupta sir if you have any questions you can ask so Or we have you, you can give your opinion also about uh, madam stock or your own opinion about litigation anything friends we also have two of our faculty members ma'am uh, one is bhavya ma'am she deals with contracts and family law and the other one is anjan sir who basically deals with the international uh, law and uh, our uh, honorable dean krishnaya sir is not available due to some personal reasons today and we are so sorry for that anyone uh, could please uh, raise their hands or just unmute them, themselves and rest try you can go ahead with questions rest try sir sir <laughs> Yeah, I want to listen to your voice. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, I'm gonna propose this word of thanks in the last. Yeah. Okay. You're about. To... Yeah. You can ask my madam some questions or yeah, uh, you can pause your comments. If not... Yeah. Yes, sir. I had some, but uh, th those are very very much similar to the questions that Sunila Vans. Sunila. Oh. Okay. Uh, uh, personal and all, and madam, uh, you know, given them straight away. So yeah, I'm clear with it, sir. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, so no one is having any doubts or questions. So I just uh, now request Rista to go ahead with the audience. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, Sinila. Uh, honorable professors and my dear friends, it seems to be a great honor to propose the word of thanks to all who have helped us in uh, making the seminar a very resounding success. First of all. I would like to thank you, our distinguished speaker, Malakshmi Pamani, ma'am, for making an excellent presentation and making the seminar very meaningful and interesting. Because uh, this wasn't something that that was written in textbooks and all. You went a little out of line, and you were always there. Uh, you know, uh, you were always uh, not always. Uh, you were there. You know, teach us something. Uh, you know, uh, which we cannot read or uh, which we cannot. You know, uh, only learn by our experiences and all. Uh, thank you, madam. and i would also like to uh, express a deep gratitude to principal uh, uh, professor bv murlida sir for his presence in the seminar i would like to thank a beloved uh, dean uh, mr krishna sir uh, who is not here okay. course, but he was uh, always there for, with his guidance and moral support i'm happy to express a vote of thanks to our professors that had uh, made this seminar a grand success through their motivation and dedication to uh finally i thank the wonderful students uh, who have all uh, of course uh, turned up in a uh, great such number not only from our department uh, rather also from other departments of this institution thank you so much for their cooperation once again i thank all of your quadily quadil cooperation thank you madam thank you everyone thank you shreshta thank you madam good night thank good you. night to all my students thank, thank you ma'am thank you so much ma'am uh, for your valuable time uh, you are spending with us uh, we are very uh, thankful for that uh, in future also uh, uh, we request you whenever you come to tirupati you physical yes, yes, if you come uh, come university ma'am why because uh, uh, we want more opportunities uh, uh, 
person like you in the various places uh, we personally request you ma'am as a student and uh, uh, and on behalf of our uh, faculty and our uh, university uh, please uh, whenever you come to tirupati please uh, inform me before before ma'am then we will uh, uh, arrange all the things uh, whatever you want ma'am thank you thank you so thank much, you yes. so much one, one minute one minute one minute madam and pradeep rai sir is coming in july i think so so he is going to give an offline lecture for our students so he'll be coming for some function so he is going to tell the exact date so he said he'll be here in july yeah mangeshwar rao sir after retirement yeah uh, he both are come to uh, venkateshwar swami temple ma'am okay, so he'll be visiting us and uh, we'll have a talk i was there on may 19th so i climbed the hills and i had darshan on may 20th okay, so okay. kalyan called me two days <laughs> yes ma'am yes ma'am May and they they were, they were having exams and the campus was closed no, to. No, no, but I am telling you, I was there in Tirumala because I told you I am a very religious person and I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you are telling me. I believe a lot in Tirupati Balaji Venkateshwara. Yeah, so the richest god in the world now. Most powerful god. Most powerful, also, richest god also. Sir, we also have Venkatramana sitting in our Supreme Court. So, oh, okay. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah. <laughs> from andhra pradesh yes venkatramana garu one of the most loved people's judge yes. so he is most loved by everyone everyone except by the if i am very straight except by the present ruling government in my state i wouldn't so trust don't like, i don't know about that yeah they don't like he is a people yeah, they don't like him and we love him he is very active very yeah, he is very active that's what uh, we came to know and okay, one more but, thing that i just uh, wanted to uh, mention uh, by lending this mom uh, we were basically looking for internship opportunities with you to explore the litigation so do yeah, we yeah, have... sure. yeah. you all can always send an email to me and then i will give opportunities for everyone but i don't do virtual internships no mom <laughs> definitely not <laughs> yeah mine is physical and i'm a very strict teacher also <laughs> <laughs> so that's good that's good man it should be like that only let me yes. be yes. what all you said is correct because this is a age for them to learn so that in future they'll be happy sir no pain no gain and knowledge yeah. is power yeah so, man you know at the end of the day it is how much of efforts you put in and then you wait for the results so yes 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 education is not an overnight success it's a success. long that's correct journey. Mm -hmm. Right, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, you ma'am. Thank, nice. thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so okay, much, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Yeah.